coming off a day in the upstate and western North Carolina that was filled with severe weather watches and warnings. We're following the extensive storm damage and flooding this morning, and we have live team coverage. 7 News is Christine Scarpelli live in Spartanburg. We'll hear from her in just a moment, but let's start with Jennifer Martin. She's live with the latest in downtown Greenville. Jennifer. Hey, good morning, Fred. So uh, flooding was a big problem that Greenville County was seeing. Probably the biggest effect that Greenville County as a whole saw from this storm. I want to show you the Reedy River right here. You can just see how high the water has risen here. It gives you a really good idea of what's happening across the county in places that are in low lying areas near streams, rivers, creeks. Uh, just uh, trying to remember how low this river was before and how much it's risen in just a day. SCDOT crews, I'm told, have been working overnight to restore power even. That number has risen since we were on last in the, half, in the last half hour. I went from about 600 people, rose a little bit, to uh, just over 700 people. Um, there are 700 without power, and they're expecting to bring that power back by 5 o'clock tonight. That's Duke Energy that was reporting that. We also have a look at what's happening across the county from yesterday. Uh, you can see some crews that were rescuing people across the county. Um, there are so there are several roads that were closed um, and some of them will require major repair. Those are in Greenville County include Keith Drive off of Pleasantburg, Oak Grove Road, White Horse Road Extension. And some, of course, there are some roads that have been flooded, but will reopen once the water recedes. And some of those include the Swamp Rabbit Trail from Willard to Hudson and Cleveland Park, including Lakehurst Street and Elmore Street, also from Willard to Temple. Now, crews are reminding people to use caution while they're driving out there today and not to drive through flooded roadways. A lot of times when we're driving, we see water in the road and we not, don't really know the depth. Now, 12 inches of water, it's all it takes for your car to become buoyant and start to float away. Now, today we are following uh, the, some of the tree damage that we may see from high winds. You can see there uh, on the tree, I don't know, I know it's a little tough because it's dark out here, but uh, the wind is blowing very hard outside, so we are concerned that some trees may come down because the, the ground is so soggy, so they have an unstable um, and they are very unstable today. So we'll continue to keep you updated if we do see any more tree damages and uh, as as crews are working to uh, restore power to those without it. In Greenville County, Jennifer Martin, 7 News. All right, Jennifer, thank you. Sabila? All right, thanks so much, Fred. Meantime, Spartanburg County was hit hard by yesterday's severe storms. That's right. We want to get to Christine Scarpelli live in one of the hardest hit areas in Spartanburg. Christine, good morning. Hey, good morning. Yeah, west side in the city of Spartanburg right now, still without power. We're in the dark out here. The wind just whipping by us this morning. No lights other than the headlights of the cars driving by at this point. There was some power we should mention over on WO Ezel Boulevard, just a little bit closer um, to the other side of the city. But even some signs, half had power, half didn't. Some were blown out, debris all over the place. It's unbelievable how this area was affected versus other other areas, even the west side of the county of Spartanburg this morning where I was, I had power and really had no problems. You're going to see that debris everywhere. The city of Spartanburg says they're addressing these problems by tackling the roads first. I know Fred was mentioning that there are people that are in neighborhoods that really can't get out this morning. The crews say that they're going to tackle those down trees first, especially if they're over roadways. They can't touch them, though, especially if there's power and electric lines involved until the energy company gives them the OK. So Duke Energy giving them the OK to get those power lines and trees out of the roadways and then they'll do so. Of course, attacking the trees on homes as well, making sure people are safe this morning. We saw a lot of law enforcement in the area as well with no power means security systems are down. Traffic lights are out all over this area. People are turning around here, we believe, because there's a blockage in the road right near Ann's Wigs here in the city of Spartanburg. So people going ways they wouldn't normally go. Law enforcement out just making sure everybody's safe. But take your time this morning. You know, guys, especially driving here, no traffic lights working means everybody has to treat that as a four way stop. And you just want to make sure everybody's going to do that. Guys, we'll keep you posted on what we're seeing out here on the city of Spartanburg. We'll send it back to you. All right, Christine, thank you so much.
All right, it's uh, time now to check our weather and traffic on the sevens with Carolina's chief meteorologist Christy Henderson. Any wind advisories yet? Yeah, we've got one for the whole area today. Mm -hmm. And uh, isn't it interesting? It always seems like there's two shoes to the storm systems mm -hmm. when, they, when it's something this big. The second shoe to drop is going to be those strong winds today, Sabila. Mm -hmm. So they're probably going to push the trees over in some cases. Yeah. So you got to just take it easy out there because we had all this happen yesterday. People want to get out and clean up. Good point. You got to make sure you're looking around mm -hmm. and keep yourself safe. Let's take a look at some of the uh, wind gusts forecast here uh, through 9 a.m. And really uh, for a big chunk of the day, we expect winds to gust well over 30 miles per hour in a lot of locations, even around the upstate, which is where we see the highest wind gusts right now. Again, Anderson had a wind gust of 46 miles per hour. Well, by 9 a.m., still looking at those gusty conditions and, and really nothing is going to change for us all the way into the early afternoon hours. So strong sustained winds out of the west. Winds gusting to over 30 and 40 miles per hour at times. It's really not until this evening where we start to see those wind speeds dropping down just a bit when that wind advisory does expire at 6 p.m. Right now it's 43 degrees in Asheville, 46 in Greenville. Those strong winds are bringing in cold air, so we're starting our day in the 40s. Many of us will end the day in the 40s as well. It's going to be a chilly one out there, blustery, a mixture of sunshine and clouds. We have been tracking just a couple of showers out there, but in most cases, the day will be dry for us. Let's go over to Fred for an update on live drive traffic. Well, the biggest problem we have right now are all of the secondary roads. We've been talking about this so much in the last couple of minutes, but we've got a lot of trees down or we've got flooded roads. We could have perhaps have some power lines down right now. As you take a look at our map right here, South Carolina Emergency Management Division saying that there are 83 roads across South Carolina that are closed this morning, and a lot of them are in the upstate. Now, meanwhile, let's give you a live look outside right now from one of our cameras because the interstates continue to be fine. They are accident free right now. 2685, 385 are all moving well. No construction to worry about. And that is your live drive. Julie? All right, Fred, thank you so much. Well, coming up next on Carolina Morning, deputies need your help identifying three armed robbers. We'll tell you where and when the crime took place just ahead. It's 610 right now. We'll come back with more Carolina Morning.